Hi guys and welcome back to another exciting episode. In this episode we're looking at two plants, Manuka and Kanuka, and telling, trying to tell the difference between them. Also we're going to have a look at different uh, plants uh, in that range that are now available to be used as landscaping plants and also maybe some of the other things like the medicinal uses and other interesting pointers about these about these two different plants. So first off let's have a look at the the names. So first of all we've got this one here which is the Manuka which is Leptospermum stroparium. This is a particular variety. This one here is called Martini. So we're just in a botanic gardens now and they've got a big display of different Manukas here all cultivated and all from different sizes, brown covers, semi-prostate ones and sort of shrubs and really useful for the garden. They provide a little bit of nice different texture and of course they flower a long time. They generally flower in the early summer uh, period but they also can periodically flower throughout the year which makes them very very uh, useful for a landscaping plant, very attractive. Um, now the on the other on the flip side of that we have got the uh, Kanuka. Now that has been recently renamed as Kunzia robusta. Previous to that it used to be called Kunzia uh, ericoides. Previous to that it used to be called Leptospermum ericoides. So over the years it has gone over some defining moments because initially they thought oh you know you, you, it's, it was similar to the Leptospermum but when they had a closer look at the flowers and the habit and everything else they decided actually no it's closer to some Australian natives called Kunzia and We'll have a look at when later on when we look at our identification you can see the differences between the two and uh, so yes yeah, so both called tea tree both now have separate genus and species names so they're a good plant and very very um, initially in New Zealand were very very widespread now much less widespread as as the early Maori settlers when they came here cleared uh, some the land by burning later on in a much more uh, a bigger way the settlers uh, cleared lots of farmland to get rid of these plants uh, to create places for uh, farms and things and sheep and, and cattle so they did burn off a lot of the these plants now uh, they did get a sort of almost a bit of a bad name they used to be called scrub and uh, because it, they were classified almost as a bit of a weed but interesting enough they are good plants uh, for to colonize new ground so they're one of those plants that colonizes new ground both of them and what will happen is the especially the manuka that will come in and it will be the first to establish and then it will provide a nice environment for other seedlings to to grow and eventually those seedlings will become the more mature forest and then the manuka will die so out of the two the kanuka is one of those permanent uh, members of the more adult forest and the uh, the manuka is actually one of those early establishers so there's a bit of a uh, lifespan difference manuka about 20 to 30 years kanuka 120 plus years and um, also if we're going to talk about that just the way that works because these two plants will grow in the same area the kanuka is faster and it will outgrow and then overshadow the manuka so that is kind of the way it kind of kills off the uh, those sort of species like manuka just overshadows it lack of light and then of course the plant dies so if we look at identification between the two it's just some very interesting ways they've reclassified them and first of all if we have a look at the flower on the standard manuka flower we can see that the manuka flower has a much bigger flower it's about 12 meters in diameter versus the Kanuka flower which is about half the size around about five millimeters and much smaller not only that but when they when you look at the Kanuka flower here it has anthers sorry stamens on the plant these are the pollen uh, the pollen where the pollens are much larger than the petals both plants have got five petals but the the those stamens are much longer and that was part of the classification uh, to say that they belong to the Kunzia they also, if you look at the uh, kanuka, the seeds on the kanuka are much smaller and they don't tend to stay on the plant. 
versus the Manuka, you can see the seed heads are still here. They're still there, very prominent, quite large, pretty hard. And they're a hard seed versus the soft seed of the Kanuka. Now, one of the reasons these plants keep the seeds, these Manukas, is that after a fire, they will then, the seeds will explode open and the seed will establish, be one of the first plants to establish the new land that's been all burnt. So they're like a little bit like those Australian plants, like gum trees. They kind of evolved in that sort of process. Uh, the Kanuka doesn't do that. It just, just drops its seeds when it's, when it's finished, uh, uh, when, the, when the seed is ready. And so it doesn't tend to sort of keep onto the seed. So there's a difference there basically in heights, difference in flowers. Also, if we look at the leaves, uh, these, one, these leaves tend to be a little bit more pointy and a little bit harder. And so they get, have a slightly more prickly feel to them. Nothing, nothing major, but it's just a little bit more prickly there. And if you really grab them, yeah, a little bit more spiky. Versus the Kanuka, it's a softer, a softer leaf, a slightly thinner leaf, and uh, it's easier to touch. And there's a quick saying that you probably have heard of, which is Kanuka kind, referring to the kind soft leaves, and Manuka mean, referring to the sharpness of the, of the leaves. Now, the other differences, if you look um, further down onto the bark of the plant, You'll look at the manuka uh, bark and it tends to be sort of flaky and small bits and can come off quite easily versus the kanuka which has got long strap-like uh, bits of bark and a little bit harder to peel off. Inside the kanuka trunk it's a, it tends to be a reddish bark, a reddish trunk and inside the um, manuka it's more white. So those are some, probably some of the best ways uh, to, uh, to establish the difference between the two and uh, very, you know, sort of handy if you want to sort of, you know, if you see the two uh, out in the, uh, in, the, in the native bush or whatever. So if you see one in the garden, it'll be most likely this plant here, the Manuka, the Leptospermum scriparium, and be a different cultivar. Like I said, there's those different ones, there's ground covers, there's semi-prostrate ones now that sort of only grow about sort of, you know, up to about a metre, and then ones get to about two metres. So this, this plant will tend to get to about a couple of metres, the wild one will tend to get to maybe a maximum of six, six meters versus the Kanuka, which will get to maybe a maximum of about 22 meters, but on average around about 10 or 12 meters. So what else? So let's have a look. Let's just talk a little bit about the uses of these plants. So in the early days, we had the Maoris would use these plants for the, for the wood and they would uh, use them for paddles, for shafts of spears, the early settlers would use them for fences, for uh, various tools as well, and they would also use them for piles, for houses. The Maoris would also use the, the gum of the manuka, and they use it as a, a bit of a lozenge, and of course it, they found it would, would help sore throats. And later on, um, when they did more testing on these plants, when you get the oil from both plants, it has antimicrobial qualities. So they do extract the, uh, the, the oil from the leaves and uh, they do use it uh, for those sort of things, including intestinal wounds and things like that. Don't take my word for it. Do your research on that if you, if you want to look into that. It's the same goes with the honey. So both plants produce honey that has good qualities, including manuka honey, which has actually been used in hospitals to help heal wounds. It's antibacterial, has some really good defensive mechanisms against uh, some tough bacteria. Um, and it, so that can be used, and it's again a very sort of good, healthy uh, honey to, to sort of pick. Both both honeys have got slightly different attributes. If you probably need to go and have a quick look into that if you're interested in those things. Um, the other thing, of course, is when James Cook came to New Zealand and he circumnavigated and he mapped New Zealand, he was looking at this plant and he used it as a tea. So you get about a teaspoon of the leaves mix it in with the tea and they thought that it was a pre pretty good tea um, and both trees therefore are now called tea trees. The leaves as I have already observed were used by many of us as tea which has a very agreeable bitter scent and flavour when they are recent but loses some of both when they are dried. Now don't forget to like and subscribe to Ian's channel. Um, the other thing, of course, is that he did make beer with it as well, but it was with rimu leaves or twigs, 
and they would make a batch. Um, I think you can still get some of that beer somewhere, but there was molasses and other things obviously to add to make the beer palatable. So the, it's a very useful plant. If we talk about um, in the terms of plantings and biodiversity, uh, the plants have got both, both plants are, are particularly useful. They are great for establishing native wildlife and encouraging native birds, insects, a great little habitat for places to, um, to hide out and very useful. Now, just in terms of where the plants will grow, the manuka is a little bit hardier. It will grow into sort of slight, uh, colder areas. It's about, it's, you can see it in the North and the South Island and it will tend to prefer moisture, moisture soil, but it will be quite drought resistant and uh, wind resistant. Uh, it's a very, quite a tough plant versus the kanuka. The kanuka prefers more fertile slopes and, uh, and fertile ground, and it's not quite as cold tolerant. Okay, guys, that's probably gonna wrap it up. It's a very, very uh, useful plant to use. Uh, just one more thing before I go, just to tell you quickly. So this one here, does tend to get a um, sooty mold. So I'll just show you an example of the sooty mold, whereas the, the uh, kanuka doesn't. It doesn't get that. And, but they both are susceptible to this new, a new rustic, this new Mertesia rustic has come into New Zealand in about 2017. So you have to be a bit careful of that. So they're both vulnerable to that, for that, to that disease. And in that, uh, in that Mertesia family, also the Pahutakawas belong to that. So just something we have to be a little bit careful of, I guess, uh, moving forward with these plants that they, they are protected a little bit from, from that uh, disease. Okay, guys, we're going to leave it there and we'll see you in the next one. Hopefully you'll find it useful. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Okay, uh, so this one's called Outrageous. That one's, yeah, that's Outrageous too. This one's called Blossom. That sign is called a electric red. And weary curry. And what else have we got here? This one's pink cascade. Let to spoon him dark night is that one. Blushing star, that's a pretty one. Blushing star, I like that one, blushing star. And electric re. And then this one at the end here is Mercury Island, it's another sort of ground colour type. And this one here is Dark Knight, Leptospinum Dark Knight. Snow Fleury, that's that one over there. Dark Knight, looks quite cool now. And Red Ensign, the frontier.